What's up everybody, welcome back to the vlog. My name is Sol Platocha. Today's video topic is actually a question that was on one of my videos and funny enough, I was thinking about answering it and then I realized I was gonna go down a really deep rabbit hole and I said, screw it, I'm gonna make the video to break this down. So as you can guess by the title, the question here is which one should you use for the marathon? The Nike Vaporfly Next% Percent 2 or the Alpha Fly? So before we get into it, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. You guys know how this thing works, of course. And of course, if you are already a subscriber to the channel, thanks so much. Love you guys a lot. Um, yeah, let's talk about it. So first things first, respectively, here are the specs for each shoe somewhere lining up with the shoe appropriately. I think it's like right there. I don't, I don't have this framing ever exactly figured out, but okay. First things first, let's talk about the Alpha Fly. This is the older of the two shoe models by just a few months. Not that crazy, I would say. But yeah, overall, the shoe kind of looks something like this. It weighs about eight ounces, give or take a few, depending on your size. Mine's an eight and a half. That's about there. Rolling, I would say probably about 225, 230 grams if I'm doing my conversion correctly. So it's a little bit heavier than most carbon plate racing shoes on the market, but let's be considerate here. The shoe has some additional moving parts with the air pockets as we got there. Uh, the heel of this shoe is about 39 millimeters and the forefoot is about 34, giving it a stack height of four millimeters. Very interesting. You wouldn't really think that would be the case as you can see how much Zoomax foam is just chilling on this shoe. So speaking of the midsole and the outsole, midsole is just a huge stack of Zoomax with a carbon plate sandwiched in between two pads of it, which is really cool, really awesome. That's been a good feature on a lot of the next percent racing shoes that I think is working out really well. And it does stir up a lot of controversy, but again, a lot of its competitors have also been kind of doing something very similar. Now in the forefoot, this is where all the fun really begins. We do have the alpha plate that is labeled here inside the shoe, but also we do have these air zoom pockets, which is the bread and butter of this shoe and what makes it really unique overall. So with, of course, the air pockets, you can guess what they do. The compression and decompression occurs whenever you hit in this midfoot, forefoot region of the shoe. You decompress and the pods are supposed to assist in the decompression to give you kind of a push or a launch off the shoe depending on how you run with it. That's all the cool stuff going on there. In this upper, it's an atom knit upper, which in this particular case, you can see it resembles a fly knit with obviously a little bit more of a different kind of structural design. And it's also made differently. I believe it's got some sort of heat treatment, which gives it this kind of shine and this overall toughness that exists on the shoe. And basically it's very breathable, very flexible, and I think its purpose ultimately is to reduce a lot of the weight with the shoe, but also give it a lot of breathability and have this unique design to it overall. Now the last major feature of the Alpha Fly worth discussing is the serrated uh, shoelaces that come with it. Again, this was something that I think was introduced with this particular model of shoe. And it basically really helps you lock down the tie of the shoe once you get it down. And I'm just a huge fan of it. Uh, I would take these shoelaces off once the shoe is dead and put it on some other racing shoe or even a daily trainer just to have that serrated lockdown. And uh, yeah, that's basically kind of where I'm standing with the Alpha Fly. I have used this personally in a lot of training runs and I have used it to place first in two different races and second place in another one. So this shoe is no stranger to winning alongside with me, this particular pair. So let's discuss the Vaporfly 2. This one is the newer of the two racing shoes, but it has a lot of resemblance to the Vaporfly 1. So in a way, it's just basically an older racing shoe with some new stuff, particularly the upper, obviously. So spec-wise, the shoe does weigh about 6.9 ounces on average. In my size, which is size 8.5, it does weigh a about seven maybe like 6.9 ounces and that puts at an average of about 190 grams if you're looking for that particular conversion so it's significantly lighter than the alpha fly but less moving parts in that sense in the midsole and the outsole obviously it's the same principle design where it's a zoom x two layers of zoom x with a carbon plate kind of sandwiched in between them with a heel stack height of 39 millimeters, approximately, it's like 38.6 where I read somewhere. And then in the forefoot, it's about 32 millimeters, maybe give or take a little bit more to make that conversion 
to have an eight millimeter offset, which now this is a definitely a more significant offset than the Alpha Fly. And this will be something we'll kind of bring into discussion a little bit later as to why it kind of works out with this particular racer. So the only element here that's working in the midsole and outsole is pretty much the carbon fiber plate that is shoved between the two Zumax foams. And that's really the only means of compression and decompression is that plate. So you get 100% use from that plate if you are more of a midfoot and of kind of a forefoot striker in that sense. There's no extra variables to consider that are significant, at least in my opinion. Maybe you can kind of consider the upper if you're tied incorrectly or if there's some shred on the bottom. But I'm just talking like in a general sense that this is the things to look out for. Now, the major difference between this one and the Vaporfly Next% Percent 1 is of course the upper and that is the biggest upgrade I think in my opinion. So the upper is of course this hybrid fly knit atom knit looking material. It doesn't have the same synthetic design of the atom knit but it has the same breathability and same openness from just a visual standpoint. Now of course the shoelaces in this case are also serrated so I think Nike has chosen to go down the serrated shoelace path for their racing shoes and I see that it is a really good idea and a really good fit overall as it does really kind of reinforce your lockdown in that particular area of the shoe. Now of course the tongue here is this very similar to the one that existed in the Vaporfly Next% Percent 1. However, it seems to be a little bit shorter in some sense, but it's also really kind of built differently where it's very open in this particular region of the tongue, which is kind of on the outside, but it pushes itself to the anterior side of your foot. So in a way, the front of your ankle is really just kind of riding on this area of the shoe. I don't know exactly if I like it or dislike it very much right now. Pretty much kind of indifferent as far as I'm aware. But yeah, overall with the Vaporfly Next% Percent 2, if you liked the Vaporfly Next% Percent 1 and you want a little bit more breathability and a little bit less moisture absorption in the shoe, this is probably a really good play for you overall. Okay, now begins the fun part. This is where we start comparing the shoes in terms of the marathon of which one you should use. So just for context and just to be completely honest about everything before I start diving into it. I have finished four official Chicago marathons with a PR of about three hours and 10 minutes and some change. And I have done maybe like three or four additional that were just off to the side just for fun at various points in my life. One of those marathons was definitely done in the Vaporfly Next% Percent 1, not the 2, and I did PR in that particular shoe. The Alpha Fly, however, the longest run I have taken it on so far has been a half marathon, and based on those results, I'm going to kind of give you my thoughts. So that's just kind of my preface here before we really start getting into it and we start like bashing heads in the comment section. So if you've been watching this channel already, you'll know this for sure. I've said this a couple of times. The Alpha Fly is probably going to be my go-to racing shoe in most instances. And in this particular case, I've won 5Ks, I've placed it during 10Ks, I've used it during half marathon training sessions and just felt really fresh and really good to go after those particular runs. But in the marathon, I'm kind of 60-40 on it. 60% leaning, Alpha Fly 40%, Vapor Fly next percent 2 or 1 in this case. Mostly because the familiarity of the Vaporfly Next% Percent 1 is good to know in this particular case. So if I'm running a marathon, I know what kind of times I can clock with this particular shoe. But I'm also aware of how I feel in the Alpha Fly 1. So as I mentioned before, the Vaporfly Next% Percent 2 is more of a reactive, more of a responsive to whatever you put in to the shoe kind of a run. And that's really a good thing. So if you need to slow down, the shoe is pretty responsive in that sense of it'll kind of tone itself back if need be. And it won't push you to a point where you're going to start burning out or you're going to start feeling some kind of calf strain or kind of hamstring strain. And I bring up those two particular muscle groups because in the case of some carbon plate shoes, if you're more of a four foot runner like I am, it's very likely if you are well conditioned, if you're strength trained, the shoe is going to change your stride just slightly in a way where your hamstrings are going to start feeling a little bit more work than they're used to. And what I mean by that is your back kick is probably going to be a little bit higher because of how the carbon plate is going to react when you hit the ground. So 
for example, in my particular case, I think I can probably find a video of it here somewhere. Whenever I'm running in a carbon plate shoe or something with these air pockets, I do have a really big back kick, which is really comfortable and feels very natural for me. But I know for a fact it's utilizing more hamstring and maybe a little bit more glute than I'm used to. So in kind of a fitness sense, it does kind of cheat you a little bit in a way where you might not be ready to be hitting these fast paces consistently and you may pay for it later, but you're aware of the fact that this is the natural stride in these particular shoes that you can accomplish. So uh, for other context, why this is important is because in the Vaporfly Next% Percent 1, when I was running the 2019 Chicago Marathon, I hit about mile 21 or 22 and I hit the wall. But the thing about hitting the wall here is like it turned into a run, walk, run, walk kind of a thing. But I was well above my PR at the time, about 20 minutes ahead of my schedule. And I was really close to qualifying for the Boston at the time, which was like a 305. If I'm not mistaken, it may have just been sub three at that point. And I just kept falling apart more and more. But I ended up PRing the race, despite the fact that in 2018, I had run the marathon in 326 non-stop and I still PR'd by over 16 minutes a year later in a shoe that made me crash and burn because my muscular was not in the same place as my cardiovascular. So very interesting observation on that front with this shoe. Now that I've learned my lessons on that front, this would be still like a great shoe I can redeem myself with and just like understand better that when I need to slow down, definitely slow down. Don't keep pushing in this shoe. Don't let it carry you away, you know, just have full control of it and you'll have a good time during the marathon. So again, as I should have probably prefaced this before, both shoes to me seem like really good marathon options. It's just, I'm personally leaning more towards the Alpha Fly in this case, and here is why. So again, there's some momentum I have going on with this shoe because I've won races with it so far, like legitimately won. And the case here is that the shoe itself is extremely comfortable and it doesn't feel like you're pounding the ground nearly as hard as the Vaporfly Next% Percent 1 or 2 because the air pods or the air zoom pockets, whatever you want to call them, are essentially giving you a little bit of room to kind of just have some bounce and kind of some propulsion on that front, especially with the compression and decompression. The only two setbacks here is that the shoe is just a smidgen heavier than the Vaporfly Next% Percent 1 and 2. And also, I think this is probably something worth noting, is that the Air Zoom Pockets do have a pretty short lifespan if you are using them for training. So in this particular case, like if you look at, yeah, this shoe in particular, you can see this one is like ready to start exposing the Air Zoom Pocket. So if you were to ask me if I would race in this particular pair for a marathon, the answer is probably gonna be no. But would I still use this as a trainer or use it for something like a half marathon? Like definitely, this shoe is uh, still got some life on that front in it. The other setback worth considering here, I think in my case, um, ah yeah, that's what it was gonna be, is that this shoe itself, it's very fast. Like let's not get that wrong whatsoever. It's been labeled a shoe for cheaters, I guess, because the air zoom pockets or whatever. I think Lionel Sanders said that, but whatever. He'll race with them anyways, right? A big cheater, ha ha. Anyways, the other setback here that I think happens with the Alpha Fly in particular, is that because of the air zoom pockets, you have this additional bounce, this additional compression and decompression, it becomes harder to control your pace in this particular shoe. So it's very easy to run fast in the shoe and your stride can adapt to it, but you're going to redline pretty quickly in the sense that maybe your hamstrings start getting, getting overused, your calves may start getting overused, and maybe your glutes can also start experiencing a little bit of strain as well. So to slow down in the shoe is quite difficult because of how much bounce you're getting in it. But if you are ready to sit in a race and just redline it all the way through, like, you know, uh, no holds barred, you're going to fully send it, this shoe is fine for that. But just be wary that if you get to like mile 20 and you're feeling exhausted and you can't seem to get yourself to slow down or you're trying to slow down, it's going to become a little bit more difficult in this shoe with the air zoom pockets, especially if you're a four foot and kind of a high midfoot runner. So in summary, I will say this, both shoes are definitely marathon race worthy by every stretch of the imagination. 
It just, in my personal preference, I would go 60-40 in this particular case. Mostly just because I have a great experience with the Alpha Fly overall in terms of its bounciness, in terms of its comfort, in terms of the fast response I can get from the shoe if I need to go faster. But of course I have to be very wary with the shoe in the longer stage or the latter stage of any sort of distance race that I need to gain some control so I don't fry my muscles in that particular case. Especially if like my heart cardiovascular is like in a good spot. I would need to be very careful not to crash and burn in this particular shoe. Now with the Vaporfly Next% Percent 2, again there's a lot of familiarity with this shoe because I've raced with it in 2019. I know that it will definitely take me to the places I need to go in the race. It will definitely beat my feet up a lot because I know how the reaction and the response is with this carbon plate and just two layers of Zoom X just here in comparison to the Alpha Fly. But I do understand that if I need to slow down or speed up in certain ways, the shoe is very responsive on that front and it will carry you wherever you need to go. Just of course you got to be wary of the particular fact that it is not nearly as comfortable as the Alpha Fly. But I don't have personal conclusive data that the Alpha Fly will be comfortable at like mile 22 or 23. But based on what I've been seeing on YouTube and just witnessing other athletes and other runners discuss, the Alpha Fly seems to have a consistency in terms of comfort all the way through. It's just from my personal experience, I haven't seen it at mile 22 or 23 in that kind of feeling, but I definitely know at mile 13, I feel like I can continue ripping pavement with this shoe, no matter what the weather is, because of how much bounce and how much comfort there is involved with it. So I think I'm gonna end this particular comparison here. Uh, comment section, yeah, uh, definitely let me know which one you would choose in your marathon if you've raced a marathon with either one before what was your experience like with either shoe did you like one better than the other and i guess the ultimate question will be i mean you know do you agree with my assessment is there something i'm missing out that we should discuss if we're talking about like the particular trainers associated with them that's a whole other like uh black hole we can go down i can make like a follow-up video to that if you guys are interested in terms of the zoom fly 3 maybe the zoom fly 4 if that's a thing and the tempo next percent and how they compare with their racers because they, yeah that's a that's a crazy topic we can get into i might actually make that video now that i'm thinking about it uh but yeah i think we're on the video here so thanks again for watching this video and then of course like comment subscribe you guys know how this goes you guys know what to comment down below thanks for watching this video i'll see you guys real soon